Hi guys, thanks for joining me. Today we are gonna be making the top zip zipper bag from Parker on the porch. And I made a few of the sizes right here. You get nine sizes when you buy the file, okay, over on their website. This one is the three by five, which I make all the time. This one is super cute. It holds um, gift cards, credit cards, that kind of thing, lip gloss. Um, chapstick that kind of coins it's like a little coin purse okay so there's this one and then this one is the five by seven size this is the one we're gonna make together I'm gonna walk you through all the steps of making this one okay and then this one right here is the six by ten size so I just wanted to show you a few sizes okay so these fabrics are all art gallery fabric. So this first one on the little one, I'll just show you the, it's art gallery. Just show you. If you wanna look it up, it's really pretty. There's that one. Okay, the second one, this five by seven, this is the one we're gonna use this fabric to make this one. This one is also art gallery. It's kinda, it says Pat Bravo Sparkler Fusion Art Gallery. Okay, that's what this one looks like. Okay, and then this one that I use is also art gallery. Okay. And that's what that one looks like. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. You're gonna we're gonna make the five by seven size, which was this one right here. Okay. So you need five by seven hoop. I have one sheet of cutaway on here. I like to use cutaway in my bags because your um, stabilizer stays inside of your bag. So if you use tearaway, tearaway kind of has a sound with it. So I use cutaway. So I suggest cutaway or whatever your preference for stabilizer is. And I'm using the five by seven hoop. I will get the design loaded and meet you over at my machine. Okay, I have my design loaded. You can see it right there. I'm running a Baby, baby Lock Meridian, if you're just curious what machine I'm running. I have my five by seven on my machine, and I'm gonna go ahead and run the first step directly onto my stabilizer, and it's the placement stitch. I will come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, this is what it looks like right here. It went ahead and did all those placement stitches, okay? So you can see that there is three lines right here. The middle line is where you're gonna line up your zipper, okay? So if you want your zipper to open like mine does from this side to this side, the pole's over here and it opens like this, you will put your zipper pull over here. If you want it the other way, you put your zipper pull over here. So you get to choose what side you want your pull on. So you could go like this, or you can go like this. So I like my zipper pulls on this side. So I basically, you can line it up one of two ways, depending on which way you like better. There is a little dotted line right here, that placement stitch. I line this up right along the edge right there where you can just see it and that will place it in the right place. The other thing you can do is not this dotted line, the one right above it that's in the middle. That one, if you line your zipper teeth, right here, the underneath of your zipper line right here. If you line those up to that line, then you will also be in the correct place. So whatever's easier for you, you can line this up. Uh, if you want to line this way, I always like this. See how this is touching this line? And then you just go all the way across, making sure that your zipper pull is on the outside of this placement and your zipper 
end is also the hardware is on this end the foot of your machine needs to get past both of these without hitting the metal so make sure your zipper is long enough to get past these placements if your foot of your machine will hit either one of these then you need a longer zipper you can have a super long zipper here we're going to cut the excess off you just have to have one long enough to get past these without the foot hitting it that's how you know you have a big enough zipper okay and this is these bags are the number three zipper this is a number three zipper it already has the pole and stopper on it and stop okay so i'm going to line along this line down here because i think that is a little easier okay once you have it where you wanted to have it then go ahead and tape it down and you just tape all the way across you just want to hold it in place and you don't want to tape anywhere it's actually stitching Okay, I am lined up right above that line. Okay, now we're gonna go over the machine. The next step's gonna go ahead and stitch along the bottom part of your zipper tape. Then it's gonna jump the zipper teeth and stitch along the top, tacking your zipper to your stabilizer. So I'm gonna go run that and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, you can see that it went ahead and tacked it down above and below, okay. So you could take this tape off. This doesn't matter anymore now that it's tacked down. I'm just going to get it out of the way. Okay, so now you can see it has your placement stitches right here. This will determine how big a fabric you want. I'm just going to write. Sometimes it helps if I write the top of the bag up here. And then when we flip it over, I'm going to put the top of the bag up here so you know which direction to place your fabric fabric that's what it helps with sometimes it's easier for you to follow along when I have that up there okay so we need a piece of fabric that's big enough to get past all these placement stitches and then you need that would be the front of your bag then you need one that's big enough to go past the top all the way to the bottom and over that will be the back of your bag and then you need a liner the same size as the front and a liner that's the same size as the back so you need four pieces of fabric to make this bag you could cut this front piece smaller than this outer piece but it's really just like that much so i don't take the extra time that it would take to cut two different sizes of fabric for that i just waste a little bit of my fabric so the way that i do that is i go ahead and i just fold my fabric over okay you can go this way or you can go this way in the end it's gonna cut the right amount so i'm just gonna go like this making sure i get past down here okay and then i just measure above this because you need it that big for the back of your bag okay and i just cut it across and then i cut it this way because this is folded over you need one for the front of your bag and one for the back okay so that is how quickly i measure for this bag so i have two pieces here okay now you need to do the exact same thing for the lining now i'm going to use this fabric right here this fabric i just bought at joann's it's from the keepsake and it's just a pretty pink okay so here i'm going to do the same thing i already have some of it cut because i have been cutting fabric today so this is big enough so i'm just going to make sure i can get over all these stitch lines okay and i just cut away now you'll notice that neither one of my fabrics have a direction so i could cut it either way you're going to want to make sure you're cutting your fabric the correct direction if you have a directional fabric for example let me see if i can grab some fabric i just used these in a bag you're gonna want to cut this direction so the wider part is going to be on this side versus how tall it is if that makes sense you're going to want to cut it this way instead mine i could cut 
this way or this way because I didn't have a direction. If you have a direction, make sure to cut the right direction, okay? So I'll keep this while we go through. Okay, so now what we need to do, I'm going to go ahead and prep my fabric, and then I'll come back and show you what I did. I'm going to go iron, and then I'm going to show you what interfacing I used as well. Okay, I showed you guys how to cut the size of the fabric. So now I have two liners. It's just woven fabric, and all I did was iron it to get the wrinkles out. Okay, now the outside of my bag, on these, um, these type of top zip bags, these smaller bags, I like to use fusible midweight interfacing. It's 931TD, it's Pellen. Okay, that's what I used on here, okay? So on the outside of your bag, it's also woven fabric. You can use other fabric. If you use um, cotton lycra, I use SF101 or I use feasible fleece if the bag's big enough. If the bags are really small, I would use SF101. The interfacing is thinner. If I had bigger bags, my bigger bags, if I want to use it as like an electronic bag or something, I will use fusible fleece instead. But for these bags, I am using woven, so I am just using the mid-weight fusible interfacing. So you can see that I prepped it and put it on here. If you do not know um, how to use the interfacing, it has a smooth side and a rough side. The rough side just has like glue or whatever. So you would take your outside fabric, you would do the wrong side facing down. This is the wrong side of the fabric. You would take the rough interfacing and you would line it up along your fabric. And then I always flip it over and I just iron it on, okay? Make sure not to iron the excess, cut that or whatever, so your iron doesn't get the sticky glue on it. But I would iron it, and then it just makes your fabric a little thicker. So this fabric's a little thicker than just the woven, okay? And I only do this on the outside of the bag pieces, okay? So all my fabric's prepped now. I have two outside pieces and two liners. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and cut uh, the... Uh, stabilizer out from the zipper. So here's the front of the bag and the top. You go ahead and flip it over. Now I'm going to cut this in um, stabilizer out. So when we go to turn the bag, it's not there. You can do it at the end, but it is much easier to do it now when there's no fabric liner on either side of this getting in the way. So what you do, let me draw this line for you real quick so you can see it a little better. I probably should have just used black thread so you could see it. So the line right here, so you have your middle zipper line right there and then you have the top, you're gonna cut that out, okay? So I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna take these applique scissors, I'm gonna go ahead and cut up. You're not cutting any of the stitches, you're cutting right under them, along them, on the inside. Okay, so I'm gonna cut all the way around this side I'm just gonna hold it and I normally just scoop my zipper and it goes all the way along it okay so you're basically just cutting out that one line that you lined your zipper teeth up next to so you can see that you can see that now so if I open my zipper right now that's where the hole is okay so you don't open your zipper right now. You open it later. But I just wanted to show you that's what you did. You just made it later so when we turn the bag, when we open our zipper, we can turn through this hole because this is cut away. So it's just easier to cut it now than to cut it later because at the end, you're going to have liner here and you might cut your liner. So this is when I do it, okay? So you went ahead and cut that out. Now the next thing we do, we're still on the underneath of our hoop we're going to go ahead and place our liner this is a top zip bag so we do it the flipper method so let me let me get some fabric that has direction because it's going to make a difference and let me just cut some of this so it's easier to show okay i'm just going to cut here so i can use it for something later I'm just going to cut a piece so I can handle it a little better. Okay, so I'm going to place this liner, but if this was your liner, you want the 
this would be ironed. It's going to be facing you. We're on the underneath of our hoop, the right side facing you. Then you would flip it up like this. You have a line right here. You just pull this right below that line and then you would tape it like this. I'm not going to use this, but I'm just showing you. Then we're going to do the front, but when it stitches the next line, when it pulls down, the line, the line will stitch here on our next step. When you pull it down, it's facing the right way on the inside of your bag. Okay. So that's how you will, you would place directional fabric for your liner. I'm using this fabric. So I'm taking the right side. So if I had hearts towards me, you would be facing you. I'm going to do the right sides up. So the wrong sides is facing up now. I'm going to pull it past this line, making sure you're past both your placements on this side and you're going to tape it. Okay. So later when the line goes there, we pull the liner down and it's showing the correct way. Okay. So we're going to place it there and just let our liner hang out right there. Now we're going to flip it over. Okay. And we're going to do the same with the top. The top and that liner get placed the same time for this next step. So I'm going to take one of these. This is my outside fabric prepped with my mid-weight fusible interfacing, interfacing. Okay. So if this was same thing here. If this was my fabric directional facing me, see the cactuses are facing me right side up. You'll flip it like this, pulling it down to the edge of the zipper. Sorry, that's my iron. I just pull it to the edge of the zipper and I would tape it right there. Now we bring this over to our machine, making sure the liner stays up when you put, put it on your machine. You stitch the next step. It stitches one line right here, attaching the top, the liner to the zipper and the stabilizer. And then when this folds down, this is facing the correct way. Okay. So that's the directional fabric. Mine does not matter. My flowers go all different directions. So I can just place whatever I want to be shown. So I'm just going to flip it up like that. I'm going to tape this down. I'm going to go over to my machine and then I will show you how I double check to make sure that my liner stays up and out of the way in the right place before we stitch the next step. Okay. So I will bring you back over to my machine. Okay. We are on step three. I'm showing you that it's going to stitch that one line. What I was telling you, I'm on the machine. This is my top fabric, how it should be taped down. My underneath liner is also just hanging out down there. I always put this on my machine and I make sure my liner is still sitting in the right spot, that it didn't get bunched up or the tape didn't pull off. If it did, just place it again the right way and put it back on. So now we're going to stitch the next step. It's basically just going to do a line right here, um, attaching the liner to the top of your bag to your stabilizer. I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, it stitched that line right there. I'm showing you the line. So now when this flips over, it looks right, okay? The back, I'll show you, also has that line right there. Okay, so when this flips down, it's also correct, okay? So I'm gonna put this back on the machine, making sure that liner stays out of the way. And see how it bunches up like that because it's not out? This is why I say you lift this up and double check to make sure your liner is correct because if you don't, sorry, if you don't, you're gonna stitch it and you're gonna have to pull out the stitches, okay? So both your liner and your top are out. So the next step's gonna go ahead and tack down your front of your bag. So I'm gonna pull this down. Make sure you pull that down and just smooth it out. Just make sure that it's smooth and tight so it's how it should be so it's not bunched up and go ahead and stitch the next step the next step is going to go ahead and stitch down here over there and up and that's just tacking the front of your bag down make sure your liner stays out of the way so i'm going to run that i'll come back and show you this is what we look like right here it went ahead and tacked the front of your bag down you can see it stitched along the sides we still have our liner up now, if you added anything to your bag in software, if you added a name or some sort of design to this 
um, if you merged a design on here, you would stitch it now before you pull your liner down. You want your liner to cover any stitches that are on here. I didn't add a design, but if you did, you would stitch it right now, okay? So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and pull the back of our liner down. So you flip this over, okay, and you pull this down. And you can see I have excess because I measure for the whole size of the bag and I don't want it to get caught in here. So I'm just gonna cut it a little. You can see it has to be longer than this bottom placement line. So don't cut too short, but I'm just gonna get it a little bit to get it away from this, okay? So then you're gonna go ahead and smooth it down, pulling it tight, okay? And then you're gonna take tape I actually like this other tape for underneath, okay? And you're just gonna tape this down really good because this is underneath your hoop and you don't want this to move when it's stitching the rest. Okay? And then a lot of times I tape these down too because these can move. I'm just gonna tape these down too just so it doesn't go into my stitches, okay? So I have this completely taped down, okay? So we're gonna go back to our machine. We're gonna put it on our machine, then look underneath, just making sure that this does not move and the tape did not move because when you're pushing this on your machine, sometimes this gets moved. Make sure it's not moved, just kind of peek underneath and stitch the next step. The next step's gonna go ahead and do the exact same step. It's gonna stitch down here, over there, up there, tapping your liner down okay so i'm gonna go do that i'll come back and show you what it looks like okay this is where we're at this is what the front top looks like this is what your underneath should look like right now okay so on these top zip bags there is a hand strapped option i'm not gonna make that option on this bag that we're making but i want to at least explain it to you there is another file that you will receive when you buy these for a hand strap. So basically what you do, you just go ahead and put your 5x7 in if that's what you're doing. And then it will draw basically a rectangle. You'd put your vinyl or whatever you're using there. And it will stitch, it'll basically stitch a top stitch on it, around it. And then you can cut it. So if you see on this step right here, it has these two placements you would now do that if you're adding the hand strap so you would put this back on you would go ahead and stitch it's going to show you a placement for how to line up the hand strap and then once you run that i'm going to go to the next step once you run that then you go ahead and then you would basically place it where it was like this I didn't make it so it doesn't have the top stitching, but just say this is pretty much what you do. You would line it up on both sides on that placement, and then you would stitch this next one, and it's going to tack that side down, and then you would stitch the next one, and it would tack this side down, basically attaching the hand strap to the front of your bag. And there are pictures when you go to the Parker on the Porch website, there are pictures of what a bag looks like with the hand strap. I'm not doing the hand strap, so I'm gonna skip those two steps. So I wanna show you basically how you get to the steps. If you find your little needle with the plus and minus, then I, some people have a plus or minus with a spool. I have these arrows, so this basically lets me skip steps back and forth. I can go whichever direction I want. Okay. So that was our liner going down. Here's the straps right here. I'm not doing them, so I would skip them. I'm going to go down, and then I'm going to go down again, and then I'm going to go down again. So the next step is basically putting the back of the bag on the front of the bag if you don't want to do the hand strap, okay? So that's how you move around in your steps to not stitch those if you want to skip something, okay? So I'm going to bring you over to the Parker on the Porch website to just show you what it looks like with a hand strap. I had a couple of the bags. I actually stitched some of them, but um, 
I must have sold them because I don't have an example to show you, but I'm going to show you on the website so you can see what I'm talking about as an option. Okay, I'm on the Parker on the Porch website here. Here is your bag set. That's um, how much it is. You get nine different bags. Okay, so if you scroll down in these pictures, this is pretty much what we're making. We're just making different sizes. Okay, so here's just some other pictures. Here's an example of the hand strap right here. Here, you basically, you have a whole extra file. She added it as an add-on so you could have this option if you wanted to use this. I'm not doing this option on my bag, but I wanted to show you. So this is actually the one that I stitched. Here's a bag without this hand strap, and here's a bag with the hand strap. This was my photo. I made these. Okay, and I actually added a like nail boss here. You can add stuff to the hand strap file if you want. Okay. And then here's another version of it. And then here's a picture of what it's used for. So you do get that add-on option in this file set. And if you want to do it, then just go ahead and stitch the hand strap first before you make the bag. And then I just showed you it does two placements. You place this on it, and then it tacks down this side and tacks down that side. And then the rest is the same. We, we're going to continue forward. And that's what we would do with the strap or without the strap, okay? So you can see what that looks like and what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have the liner tacked down. We have the front tacked down. We're all ready to go. If you did your hand strap, you would have your hand strap right here tacked down and everything would be fine. If you added names or added something to here, you would have had that already done and then the liner after. So we're all on the same page. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put the back of the bag onto the front of the bag. And there's two things you need to consider whenever you put the back onto the front of a bag, no matter which bag you make. You need to open your zipper. You need to open your zipper far enough over that you can turn through the hole, but not so far over that the foot of your machine will hit your zipper pull. So I'm gonna pull it over here, but I am gonna leave, you can see where the stitches are right here. I'm gonna leave enough room that the foot of my machine can get behind, be, get by this without hitting your pole. You don't want it to hit the hardware, okay? So, there we go. The other thing that we do right now, zippers always open, and I'm just gonna grab some fold over elastic. You can use other things, but I'm just gonna show you as an example because these are the most common questions people have. So if you wanted to make this into a purse, you could use vinyl, you could make bias tape, you can use fold over elastic, you would basically take D-rings and you would place them with the hardware inside of your bag. If you place, I know when the bag's done, the hardware's on the outside, but if you did that, we cut all the way around this bag before we turn it. So all this would get cut off. Just remember that. Don't put it on the outside because it gets cut off. Okay, so you would place it on the inside of your bag. And if I was going to do this and try and make like purse straps, I'd put like one right here. I'm just showing you. I'm not doing this, but I'd do like one right there. And then I would take another one. And I would place it on the other side. Basically, and I would kind of move my zipper in. And I would make it the same distance from the stitch lines on either side so it's even. I would make sure both of my hardware are sitting the exact same place on my zipper, so the, the same length, okay? And I would tape on this side. So then when your bag is done, these will flip out and you would have a hardware to attach purse straps to, okay? That's how I would do it. I'm not adding this, but I'm just showing you. The other thing people like to add their tags here, you would add it. You can add anything along these outside stitch lines and it will um, get stitched into your bag, okay? So I wanna show you an example on these little ones, these little coin purses. I like to add a clip-on lobster swivel clasp. This is just fold over elastic 
with a little class. I like to make these because it can clip onto purses, it can clip onto backpacks, and then you, it's really easy to get to it. So if I put a bunch of chapstick and some cash in here for my daughter, if she hooks it onto her backpack, she always just has it on the outside of her bag and she can get to whatever is in here pretty fast and easy. Okay, so this is another thing that I like to hook onto bags. And here's another example of cute little corgis. If you ever, if you watch a lot of my videos, I'm sure in some of, them, some of them you hear dogs barking. We have corgis, so this was my daughter's birthday gift that I gave to all her friends. Little corgi bags, okay? So if you wanted to add a swivel clasp, it's the same way. Let me get a lobster clasp for you. You would just take some fold over elastic. You would put it through this lobster swivel clasp. And I like to place it on the side of my bag. So you would go like this and just place it down. Remember, hardware on the inside. Now, if you want a really long fold over elastic, so it has a lot of, like it's really hanging, like a lot of length, then you would pull this way more. You can see where it's going to stitch because you have your placement lines right there. If you want it shorter, you would pull it in like this so you have less of the fold over elastic hanging. Your only thing you need to watch when you do that is this is hardware. This is metal. You need to make sure the foot of your machine is going to be running along this line. You need to make sure that that will not hit your metal. Otherwise, it will mess up your design. So it has to be far enough over that it won't hit your metal. Okay, so that's all I'm going to talk about for hardware and things that you can add and options and stuff. So now that you have everything added that you want added, now you're going to put the back of your bag on. Make sure your zipper pulls open. Okay, so I'm going to show you with directional fabric. Oops, here's my directional fabric. Okay, we're putting the back of your bag on. So if you started with the fabric facing you the correct way, so this is how I would want it. You're not going to flip it like this. If you flip it, this is how we flipped the liner and the front. If you flip it like this, your fabric's going to be upside down because it's gonna look like this on the back. So you do not wanna do that here. So make sure when we're putting the back of the bag on, it is flipped differently than we did the, we placed the other two fabrics. It does not flip. It just sits on the back. That's why you don't do it the same way, okay? So the way you put the back on, it's gonna be facing towards you the correct way, the right side up. You're gonna flip sideways like this, okay? That's what direction you want to do with your fabric to make sure that this is facing the correct way on the back of your bag in the end, okay? So place your fabric that way. Mine does not have a direction, it does not matter, but you would flip this way, okay? So you're gonna make sure you can get past all these placement stitches, put your fabric on, make sure your hardware's in the right spot and taped on good. Make sure your zipper pull is open. Go back to the machine, stitch the next step. The next step is going to stitch all the way around this several times, okay? Now I'll come back and show you what mine looks like. Okay, this is what we look like. It went ahead and went all the way around, and it's now tacked down, okay? So we are on our last stitch step. We're going to flip our hoop over onto the back, and you can see we have our one liner here. We are going to place this liner the exact same way. We're not doing, it's not going to flip. So you wouldn't do it that direction. You would do it the same way we just did the back of the bag, okay? So you have the right side up. The direction is facing you, the correct direction, and then you're gonna turn it like this. When you do that, then these two will be facing the correct way, okay, in your bag. So that's which way you would do it for directional fabric, okay? Mine doesn't matter, but I have the right side up. I'm gonna flip it this way, okay? Now you're going to get past all your stitch lines, okay, make sure you get all the way around, okay, and then I'm going to tape this down because you're on the underneath of your hoop. I'm just going to tape this down so it does not move. And then we're going to go back to our machine, stitching the very last step. And the next step is going to go ahead and stitch the same thing it did here, but it's going to leave a hole right here so we can flip through it, okay? So when you put this back on your machine, 
you go over your machine and put it on. Make sure to look underneath. Make sure this did not move, okay? And I'm going to go stitch that. I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, this is what it looks like. Here's the top. Here's the underneath. You can see that it left like a little hole right here. So we're going to go ahead and take this off of our hoop. Stuck with all my tape. Okay. I like to cut from this side because it shows where the stitches end on both sides. So I just take a scissors. I'm going to cut up to that spot, the edge where the stitches start. Don't cut any of your stitches. And then I'm just going to cut all the way around. Okay. So this is what I was saying. Everything on the outside of this placement stitch line gets cut off. If you have a super long zipper, the excess gets cut off. If you put your hardware on the wrong side, it will get cut off. So I always just kind of think of that when you're placing your hardware. That that's how I always remember. So you're just going to cut all the way around and you're going to cut until you hit where the stitches end over here, and then you're gonna turn out. You need a little bit of this liner fabric to close your bag. So I'm gonna cut across a little bit. Now, the two pieces of fabric on the either side of the hole is your liner fabric. I'm gonna move that up because we want that fabric. And I'm just gonna fold this over to hold it, okay? So that's out of the way. This other fabric can be cut off. It's just excess. So I normally hold it like this and I flip it over because then you can see your stitch lines. You don't want to cut any of your stitch lines. So when you cut this, make sure your scissors is up and down. Don't cut like, don't cut like this because if you do, you're going to cut into your underneath liner. Okay. So make sure you're cutting straight across when you're cutting this. Watch where you're uh, scissors are tilted. Okay, so then all this is garbage. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and flip through this hole. So I'm just going to go ahead. Now be kind of careful. This is just woven fabric with some stitches. If you pull too hard, tug too hard, it's going to tear. Okay, so I'm just going to pull that through. Depending on how thick your fabric is and what you're using could make it a little more difficult. Okay. I'm just using my fingers to get it through. Let me find it. So I'm going to use this. You guys might use the purple thing or whatever. It's just a, something to help you turn your corners. Be kind of, I'm using the blunt side of this just so it doesn't poke through. But I'm just going to try get this corner out a little better. That one. This one. And this one. Okay. So now what I do at this point, you can see that our zipper is already open. If you used cutaway or tearaway, but you didn't cut it, you would see the tearaway right here. So then if you had tearaway, you would just pull it and then you'd have to tear it all the way out of this, right out of these stitches right here to get it away from your zipper. If you use cutaway and you, pref you waited till now, you would see your cutaway strip right here. Now you would go ahead and cut all the way around here, cutting it out. But the reason we do it before is because you risk cutting your liner fabric and your zipper and stuff. So it is easier to cut it in the step that I do it because you don't risk cutting your fabric, okay? So if you did leave it till now, go ahead and cut it now, okay? And then if you didn't open your zipper, this would be closed. You wouldn't have this hole and you wouldn't be able to turn your bag a second time. So that's why you had to have the zipper open. Okay, what I do, usually there's a few little stitches, like up, little strings, not stitches, but you have some little excess strings up here. And then there's usually one like over on this side too that I always get. I just take some scissors and I just cut those away right now. Careful not to cut your liner. So I just clean it up a little bit if there's a couple. There's usually a couple little strings that are there. So we are done with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and close. We're going to close this hole. And there's lots of ways to do this. I'm going to show you a couple things. I'm going to use this tape right here. This is like a double-sided tape. It's called 
peel and stick fabric fuse. This is what the box looks like, okay? So this is what I'm gonna use. You can go ahead and use glue if you like. This is the glue that I would use if I was using glue, fabric tech glue. A lot of people usually have their own preference on what they wanna do to close a bag. You can ladder stitch if you're good at ladder stitching. Some people use their sewing machines. You can do whatever method you like. I'm gonna use this. So the way that I use this, you can see there's a stitch line right here. I line my tape over, just over that stitch line. Okay, so I just go ahead and place this down. I line it, once you get to the edge, I just tear it, it just tears. Now one side is sticky right here. The other side has this um, cover over it and we're gonna peel it off so both sides end up being sticky in the end. But I'm gonna push this down really good so it attaches to your fabric, okay? Then I'm gonna go ahead and fold over. You have this same piece of fabric on either side. I'm gonna fold it over so we can kind of just create like a sandwich like this. I'm gonna fold both over and I'm gonna get it where I want it, how I want it to look, okay? There's like a string right there that's attached to my tape now, so I'm gonna just cut that, okay? So this is how I want it when it's smooth and flat. You want it just to line up perfectly, okay? So once you have it the way you want it, then I open this and I start peeling off that top part of the tape. So you just get a corner of it. Make sure the sticky part stays down. Okay, and I just peel a little bit and then I just stick it together. And then I just keep peeling a little bit and push it together. And I just get all the way across. Now when I pull this out, sometimes the fabric kind of pulls with it. If it does, just take the corner and push it back in and then just make sure it all adheres, okay? So I'm just making sure it attaches. And then you can see that it's completely straight, there's no holes, it's closed. So that's how quick it is. It's really easy to use. Okay, now that we have the hole closed, we're gonna go ahead and flip our bag again through our zipper that's open. So I'm just gonna put my hand in there, flip it there. These bags are really fast. It takes a little longer when I'm doing a tutorial because I'm stopping and explaining every single thing, but it's a really fast bag. Okay, so you get it all turned and then I'm gonna make sure my corners look great. Okay. Okay, then I would go to my iron and iron it. Make sure it's ironed really nicely. Okay, and here you are. Here is your top zip zipper bag. This is the five by seven size. There's the front, there's the back. You open the zipper, it's completely lined. Looks super cute. So some of the other things I added on, like these, I added these little um, leather pole things. I'm gonna show you two things just as an added. I always try to show you different things that you can do with it. Just to give you a couple more examples, I'm gonna get a piece of string real quick. Okay, so these number three zipper poles have a pretty tiny hole right here. So some of this stuff is hard to feed through. So you can see, this is just like a zipper pole that I got on Amazon. Sorry, I needed to pause a minute. I have a cold, so. If you're used to watching my tutorials, I probably sound different, but I wanted to make sure to get this recorded so you guys didn't miss out on your Tuesday video. So if you buy these, these turn out really cute on these number three zipper pulls, but they are like impossible to push through this hole if you just sit here and try push through it. The trick to this is to get a piece of thread, put it through like this, okay? And you can cut this some more. It can be really short. See how it's put, it's like put through like that. Okay. And then you're going to go ahead and feed this through the little hole. See? And then I hold the zipper and I pull. And it 
basically feeds it for you. And then you just put it through like this, pull, and now you have a cute little zipper pull, okay? So that's how you would use these. The other thing that I use, I'm gonna pull this off so I can show you the other option that you could do that's also cute. Sorry. Let me get that off, okay. Oops. I This time on these, you'll see I added like a little leather part. It's this right here, this. These come in lots of colors. And so all I did was just cut some. I did the same thing with this string. I basically just held it. Let me get it, okay, like this. And I just held it like this. And then I fed it through the same way. Just get the string through here. And then I pulled. Okay, until I got enough of it through. And then I, before I pulled it through, I got these two even again because it wasn't even. So I just got the edge to the loop even. And then I just pulled both of these through and then pulled. Okay. And then you can cut it down if, that, and if that's too long or whatever. So it turned out super cute. And there's lots of different colors of both. Like for example, on this, there is a link below. If you look under this video and if you click on, I'm not sure what it says, just right below this video, if you click on it, it will show you all of the different links to the different stuff we use. So there's lots of colors of these poles. There's also lots of colors of these. I'm not sure if I have this linked. I can link it in this video. You see, I have a bunch. Like, there's lots of... It comes in a lot of different colors that you can pick. I have several. So, those are just a couple little options to fancy up your bag if you want, like, a little extra pull on there. Okay? And then you can just cut it shorter if you want. Okay? So, you can cut it as short as you want. Okay, that is the end of this tutorial. I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to post it in here. I always like to hear um, if you have questions or what you thought. The other thing is, is um, you can also post in the Parker on the Porch Facebook group. There's lots of people in there that will answer any questions that you have as well. And if you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Um, it gives us more visibility and it makes it worthwhile of doing the videos. The other thing is, is if you click on the little bell, that's a subscribe thing and it will notify you. The little bell will notify you when the next tutorial comes out. I am currently uh, making a new tutorial every other Tuesday and then Julie is making a live Facebook tutorial every, the opposite Tuesday of me. So every Tuesday you should be able to get a Parker on the Porch tutorial. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.